Welcome back. It's the voice of disruption. I'm Ken Rakowski. Of course, we're hanging out with incredible people that are disrupting their lives so you can learn to do it yourself. And make sure as we talk about these people, check them out. Get online and see what they're doing. Matter of fact, the guy sitting next to me, Charlie. Charlie. And that's his Instagram. How do you get a Charlie? It was so interesting because I took a one year break from Instagram to transform my life. And when I got back on, I was like, I just want to like help people and do like inspirational things for people. And Instagram reached out to me. I was like, we, we own this name and we love what you're doing and we want you to have the name Charlie. What was your first name before you gave your own name to yourself? Go back when you're eight years old. What's your Charlie what? CEO Charlie. That's what you call yourself. What's your website people want to find you? CharlieJabbly.com. But you were known as CEO Charlie. Yes. Because even when you were young, besides wanting to be an athlete, you like business. Well, my, my truest dream was to be an athlete, but when I was young, I was, I was chubby. And, you know, when you get to that age where you, you want girls to like you, you need something to be good at. So it's like when you're at school and those guys over there, they, they know how to dance. Those guys over there, they play football. And even though I love sports, I wasn't good. So I was like... I'm gonna do business. I think business and entrepreneurship is gonna be like the next rock star. Like I, I've always had the gift of like seeing it around the corner and I, I put on a suit and I would go to school with a suit on and a brief, like I was the business guy. So I like, in my mind, I created this, this person who I wanted to be and I lived it. So it was like. Well, you lived it and you actually built a massive business around it, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, you became extremely financially successful. Mm -hmm. But as you became real successful financially, everything else kind of fell apart, right? That's right. And you, uh, what happened was you celebrated by eating. Mm. And then eating started eating you. The, the interesting thing about business for me is there were two things. There was the, the celebration of success always was like, oh, let's celebrate, let's eat. And then the stress of business would be like, oh, let's eat to feel better. So business <laughs> just had me trapped in my own addiction of food because it all roads led to, and I, I live a very extreme life, an extreme personality to where it's like I didn't find a balance. Is it extreme or addictive? Both. So, you, I mean, whatever it is, we call it passion. Yes. You know, maybe therapists from the past would have called it addictions. You drove deep into whatever that was, right? 100%. So even though you would work your tail off, you would eat your tail off too. Yes. Right? And yes. you would enjoy it. Would you enjoy eating? I love food. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Yeah. What's your favorite right, right, right now? If you give anything, regardless, there was no calories in it, but you could eat it, what would it be? Um... I'll be honest, I reprogram my mind to where so you don't I don't think about that anymore? I really no no no. There's something I love and it's a sweet green salad. I call it the rocket bowl. And it literally talking about it, my mouth is watering. Because I reprogram my mind to like love it and it does taste good. It's really good. Oh, sweet greens right down the street. Okay. Yeah. I haven't had that yet. So Charlie, let's let's get going. Um, you're doing well in business. Yes. You're kicking butt. Yes. Right? You're you're um, you're killing the music industry in a great way. Yeah. You figure the formula out. Yes. People are seeing you as the expert. Yes. How did you feel about yourself? If everybody saw you as that shining star of just talent and getting it, how did you see yourself? It was so interesting. So to rewind for the audience, um, I, got into, I got into music. I was Soldier Boy's cameraman. I had built this website, and when I was young, uh, Soldier Boy blew up and he told his record label, I want Charlie to be my cameraman. So I dropped out of college to go on tour uh, and I got fired. And uh, when I got fired, I was like, wow, like that camera stuff isn't where the money is. And I told my mom, I said, I'm going to be a hip hop manager. She said, what do you know about managing rappers? I said, nothing yet, but that's where the money is and I'm going to figure it out. Okay. So uh, I signed a group. And they fired me. Uh, so I just kept falling on my face. I, f I failed a lot. And um, I f signed another group. And I was like, please just be loyal. Because I was living in my mom's basement. And they were living in their mom's house. And I was like, we can do this together. Just don't leave me when I blow you up. Because I know how to blow talent up. And they were loyal. And I took, I took three records. Their name is Travis Porter. I took three records, top 10 independently without a record label by driving from every radio station from Jackson, Mississippi to Washington, D.C. Wow. 
and and it would be like the radio program directors they had never seen anybody do it like because i was like just personal pr kid, 19 years old and i would stand outside the radio station until they came out i'll knock on the window sometimes i'll be in like little country towns where the radio station was the size of this room and i would stand outside the window like hey like i'm out here and then, I'm, then I, when they would walk out i'd be like Look at this video. We have a fan base. Will you please play our song? And I think out of sympathy, they just started playing. <laughs> and that's our music. what got them to be heard. And yes. Got and then it great success. Blew up, and then I signed Two Chains, and that was my biggest artist. And uh, we we did a lot of world tours, and uh, I retired uh, at 29 in October. You retired, but let's go to this point where you're at the highest in business. Yes. You were pretty high in weight too, right? Yes. How would you perceive yourself? Everyone saw you a certain way. How did you see yourself? It was interesting. Um, I would... Fridays and Saturdays, I had, I had a phobia of the weekends. Um, because when you're so big and you're looking at social media and everybody's going out and living this perfect, happy, life, going to the club, looking good, feeling good. And I was, I was so depressed and I had anxiety. Um, none of my clothes would fit and I would just binge and it would just be so tough that the whole world would go out and party to what the music and the culture that I would create. But on the weekends, I would crawl into a, a wow. hole. So like my life is at this all time high and in business, but personally, I was like, I felt I like, it. yeah. It's like Willy Wonka being a diabetic. Yeah. You know, you can't, you can't partake in the sugar that you made. Yeah. So you've going through this, what changed it? Did you want to change or were you in this perpetuating circle? I was diagnosed with a brain tumor mm -hmm. and it was, it just sent me into this dark, dark place where I knew not something had to change, I knew Everything had to change, and I, w I went on a journey, and I said, I'm going to leave my business, I'm going to leave um, my friends, I'm going to leave my city, and I'm going to make a whole new life for myself if I want to live, mm -hmm. and I did it. You did it. And Of all those things, if you had to leave it, because most people say you take your problems wherever you go, mm -hmm. what do you think leaving helped you was it were you with the wrong friends were you just what was it what was wrong with where you were so for my life i had to create a new algorithm okay you know how like social media like if you like something mm -hmm. it starts feeding you more of it right like that's what like artificial intelligence ultimately is it's like oh this is what you do so we're going to build on top of that so in my life, I had to wipe clean and start liking new types of things so more of that would come into my life. Because in the past, I was just a, I was just a consumer and I would consume food and I would consume things just like money and business and I needed to consume life. So I wiped my slate clean and I wanted to make a new algorithm for my life. And that's where Charlie Rocket came from. Yes, I had to. So <laughs> Charlie Rocket, like, just like how I created CEO Charlie, mm -hmm. like I have an imagination that I can like make up this world in my head, make up this character and I'll live it. And I, I wanted to make a, a superhero that was gonna save my life. And I was gonna dress up as him and be that superhero every day. So the person that was gonna save my life was this, was this athlete and his name is Charlie Rocket. And I put my bandana and my glasses on and I wake up and I transform into Charlie Rocket and I go run and I go bike and I have all this good energy and I eat healthy and me dressing up as Charlie Rocket every day when I work out helps save my life because that's who I wanna be. I wanna be an athlete. So my truest dream when I was young was I wanna be an athlete. I buried that to do business. And then I was like, okay, let me go back to my dream because when I was diagnosed with brain tumor and sick, I said, was that it? That was my life. That's it. Like just business and money. I was like, let me go back and do my dream. And uh, in a week, I'm doing an Ironman in New Zealand. Well, let's let's backtrack. At your worst period, how how big were you? 
304 pounds. 304 pounds. You ended up losing 150 pounds plus. 125. 125. It will be 150 because I'm be. still carrying a little bit of weight. You're going to get rid of that, okay? <laughs> yes. And um, you look totally, actually, I didn't recognize you when you walked in. Really? You look much younger than I thought you'd be. Oh, so it looks you. like you are reversing not just that. Uh, you're reversing everything. And you are a uh, big, big uh, Ironman. Ironman, what's the Ironman? What, how many, how many uh, miles do you bike? I bike 112, mm -hmm. swim 2.4, and run a full marathon, 26.2 miles. And generally, how long does that take to do? Um, slow people like me, mm -hmm. <laughs> it takes probably about 14 to 16 hours. Okay. And how do you train for that? It's interesting. I use, um, like... When I, when I sold myself I wanted to do an Ironman, I looked at all these training programs and they were all so complicated. And I don't like all that data and the confusion and you got to do this and this and heart rate and this. and I'm like, no. How many hours do these Ironmen train a week? They say between 8 and 14. I was like, okay, that's a couple hours a day. When I was a kid, when I was 8 years old, Riding my bike around the neighborhood for a couple hours wasn't hard. Not at all. Going to the pool on the weekend and swimming for a couple hours wasn't hard. And going to run around the park all day wasn't hard. So I'm just going to train for an Ironman like an eight-year-old. I'm going to wake up and go play for a couple hours every day. <laughs> and I'm doing an Ironman. <laughs> like it's, in New Zealand. It's incredible. When Nike, did you see what happened I with the Nike? I saw the Nike commercial. That's pretty amazing. So when Nike, but you made a commercial to Nike to pitch it, them yes. to do a commercial on you. Yes. What a brilliant idea. Thank you. And uh, we'll be seeing that. That's a commercial I'll be out soon. Okay. Let's step back now. Okay. You look at yourself now. <laughs> yes. And you're almost 30. You'll be 30 yes. uh, soon. Yes. When you're my age in your 50s. Can't wait. What do you hope to have achieved? I want to achieve the mission of everything is possible and, 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 and make sure that's instilled in the world because everybody always says anything is possible. I want to show people that everything. So I want to tell stories of all the people who have done incredible things. Like this year, I'm biking across America to find all the other stories like mine. Um, I just, I, I, want, I want people to know that, for example, people can't really do something until they see it done. The four minute mile, for example. That's right. Like nobody, nobody could do it. They said it was impossible. It wasn't humanly possible. And then one person did it. What happened the next few years? People Everybody broke. That's right. So once we see that everything is possible, we find something deeper in ourselves to be able to do it. So I just want to show those stories. You want to be a host? Are you the next Ted like, where you bring these people together? Are you, uh, no, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Are you a media company all around the idea of inspirational talents? I think talents? so. I think, I think finding stories and telling stories is what I want to do the rest Which of my means, life. Which means, in a lot of ways, you're not going to live through their eyes. You're going to constantly always be that story yourself. Always. You're always going to up your game. Yes. And also, let me ask, you're 50, mm -hmm. how will your life have changed? Your brain tumor, you're fighting it off, mm -hmm. right? Um, you're always going to go through hardships. What do you do to keep you going in a positive direction? I think for me, the most important thing is like remembering that it's not about me anymore. Like we'll let ourselves down, but we won't let somebody else down. So that really like helped me to know that like, my transformation and all this, if I make it about me, I'll be like, oh, that's cool. But I know it's for everybody else, and I can't let them down. So that, that keeps me on track. It's like if your mom asks you to do something, you're not going to let mom down. Not at all. But we'll be like, oh, I'm going to run every day, and then like, oh, I don't feel like it today. That's just for us. You're doing it for them. Do it for them. Well, Charlie, appreciate hanging out. CEO Charlie, or let's just find him Charlie. That's where he's at. Watch what he does. He's transforming the landscape. He is a disruptor and also he is a hacker. He's hacked all these ideas. So that's, we got a lot going on here. When we come back, we'll be talking to somebody that's hacking the whole automotive industry. Your mind's going to be blown. Charlie, thanks a lot. Thank you, man. You're listening and hanging out and watching The Voice of Disruption. We'll be right back.